I don't mean for some eggs and bacon. We had that this morning. Who's thirsty? Why did you leave? I wanted you to have a few words to greet the congregation. <laughs> May 27th was the first day of this 10 day shut in. May 26th that night, right after midnight, something hit me. And I knew in my spirit, the shut in has begun. My spirit is so connected to this place. It's incredible. I'm originally from Ohio. I spent many years in this town. There's a lot that has happened in my spirit between this place and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My husband is a Pennsylvanian who moved to Ohio, grabbed me up, took me back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> And there's this bond, undeniable. We were here last year for the 10 day shut in and just getting a chance to fellowship, connect again with my family, with the Amos's in particular. They know how important mother Amos was to me in my life and what a mentor she was. I don't mean to be over emotional, but I'm telling you, I am doing my best to hold it together because I feel like I'm about to lose it up here. But to see the seed of righteousness transfer from one generation to the next on steroids. <laughs> to see what the Lord is doing. This is the Lord's work. And it's marvelous in our eyes. It is absolutely profound because God, our Father, is doing so much behind the scenes. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. You really don't understand the magnitude of what's happening in this place and how far reaching it's going to be. How generational it's going to be. God is going to show up and show off. And I'm getting prophetic. I got notes. I have rivers, rivers of living water that God has deposited. And I asked Bishop, what do you want me to talk about? I can go any number of ways. And part of my trembling is because I could, you know, I felt like Jesus told his disciples, I have so many things. And you've got to reach in there and get the thing that is for the now. And I don't want to miss God for what he has to say. But it's not just what he says, it's who he is. What he does comes out of who he is. And one of the things God is, God is love. And I just want to say this to you this morning. I feel so much of the love of God for this house and for you as a people. I don't know you in the natural, but I love you because God loves you. And it's when God was moved, well, I'm not talking about a feeling, it goes beyond a feeling. Yes, 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 yes. But his spirit of compassion. So when he was moved with that, if you have compassion, sometimes you don't even need a word. The healings will just take place. Because it flows out of you. And there's a prayer that Jesus prayed that must come to pass. Father, make them one. And we get to that place, you understand, you're not just an individual. And it's not just God who's in you. I'm in you. And you're in me. We're in each other. And we're all in God. And we are one. And so sometimes we feel one another. 
May 27th came and I felt this place. It was a good feeling. Thank you, Jesus. But it's more than a feeling. It's a connection in the realm of the spirit. When we were here last year, so much happened. When God sets things in motion, just because time passed doesn't mean God is finished with what he already started. He's building. He's building something. And he's patient. He takes time. Some of the prayers that you've... Oh, little shut down. Okay, I just, I don't know if I'll get to my notes at all. I can promise you this. Whatever I start today, I will not have time to finish. But God will finish. And I promise that everyone's got their own little nugget. You're going to hear something different than somebody else is going to hear. Because God knows what you need. It may not be the same thing somebody else needs. You have a breakfast bar, you get what you want. It doesn't have to be what somebody else gets, but God has something for you. Some of you, you've been praying some prayers for years. And you've had to endure the temptation to doubt. Will it ever come to pass? Am I missing God? You question yourself. Is there something wrong with me? Did I miss an instruction somewhere? You see other people getting answers to their prayers. And you're still waiting. And the answer you're looking for is almost like it's beyond hope that it will ever happen. But God has a reason for your process. There are some seeds, some prayers that we can pray, answer can spring up like that. And then there's some, because of the magnitude, hear me, hear the Spirit of God. The depth of your prayer, the depth of the answer to that prayer, is gonna go so much further than you can imagine. Remember that one-eyed black man on Azusa Street, William Seymour? How easy some people got the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Living their best life. He's still on a little crate in a barn praying, Lord, what, why me? Where's mine? Where's my portion? Not just 10 days or 10 months. Year after year. Three years. He didn't stop praying. But it wasn't about him receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. His Pentecost experience. God says, I'm going to wait and do a deep work through your prayer. And when I I'm praying a small prayer. No. I'm praying for my son. You're praying for every son that needs to be saved. Every son that needs to be delivered. It's when your son, your daughter, gets the breakthrough, there's going to be a domino effect upon the lives of so many others. Your child. That's why the battle has been so hard. That's why the enemy has fought with everything within him to try to destroy the work of God that's in your child. And he can't because he has nothing to do with it. Am I talking to somebody? Come on, 
listen, we're going to take harps and bowls, we're going to take praise breaks. Shata Ramosa. If that's you right now, we're not waiting for an altar call for this to happen. It's released right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it right now. Listen, don't worry about trying to take no notes or nothing else. Let it go into your spirit. Let it go past just your intellect and your mind because it's out of your belly where the rivers of living water must flow. The ministers of God, we've got to flow out of our belly. The Lord taught me years ago, too many of my people teach from their intellect and they wonder why there's no change. It's not what you know intellectually no. that changes and brings life. The life is in the river. The life is in the river. And he put the river in you. He put it in your body.
that haven't even opened up and been revealed. He said this treasure is in an earthen vessel. It came from him. Every good and perfect gift. You didn't go to school and get it. You didn't get a degree and get it. You didn't pay for it. You didn't earn it. We certainly didn't deserve it. And he doesn't want us to try to control it. He wants us to let it go. We have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. What? There's a power in you that's of God. It's not of you. There is something in you that's greater than you. So don't limit it by your own weakness. Let that which is greater in you come out. God in you. Christ in you. The hope. Of a glory yet to be revealed. We've been talking about I am. Jesus said, I am the light. As long as I'm in the world, Amen. I am the light. Hallelujah. On the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John, when they got to see the true essence of his being, he outshone them in the sun. And yet he said, You. are made in my image. My likeness. Arise, shine. Your light is come. Don't hide your light. Men don't see me now. They see you. The officer that testified here last night saw the light. From this church, march into the darkness downtown and recognized the power of what you have that you released. It's greater than my weapon on my side, the baton on my hand. The real work that was done to quench the violence in this city is when the light rebuked the darkness. It's how Jesus destroys the enemy when he returns with the brightness of his coming. When your light shines, you're on a whole different level of spiritual warfare. When your light radiates, all you have to do is show up. And the darkness cannot subdue, overcome, prevail against it. There were times Jesus just showed up, and the demons who are darkness recognize that. Did you come and torment us? He didn't even say nothing. People recognize your light. People recognize when there's something different about you. And people come to that light if the Spirit of God can draw them. Yes. You know the condemnation in the world? <laughs> he said, this is a condemnation that light has come. Men love darkness rather than light. Neither would they come to the light lest their deeds be reproved. You know what? One way you discern those they may not be saved yet, but they're on their way. If you are the light and they can come to you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. they're not running from you, hiding from you, thank you, but they can come into your presence and listen to your words. Oh, they're, they're hooked. 
They're on their way. They're, they're in the birth. They're in the womb. Because people who hate the light, they, they, they're not listening to you. They're not coming to you. You can have people, they're all doped up, drugged up, sleeping with 50 different people, but yet they'll come to you. Because God's not dealing with them after their sins. That's right. And he's looking at what's deep down inside their heart. None of this is on my nose, Lord Jesus. It's time to change. It's time to transform. Not by hearing the word, but by receiving the word. We lift our hands of what I receive. What your spirit has for me. Because there's things he has for you, but you've got to appropriate them. You've got to reach out and get them. And don't wait. Don't procrastinate anymore. Know your God. Know his true character. Know his true nature. Because it's getting lost. The church becomes humanistic. Self-improvement. Messages in the soulish realm rather than a spirit realm. And it makes us feel good because our feelings are in our soulish realm. And if the seed, the sower goes to sow the seed and it only hits your soulish realm and not your spirit realm, it might produce for a while, but it's not gonna last. There's four types of soil and only one is good ground. <sighs> Be good ground. God turned that thing around me one time. I went to the altar to pray, and before I could get to my agenda, he said, you know I'm good ground. What? He says, you know I'm, I'm good ground. Uh, yeah? He said, I don't ask you to be anything that I'm not. If God wants you to be good ground, image and likeness and he's good ground. That's why he said when you sow anything, whatever your hands find to do, do it as unto the Lord. You're sowing it into God. Not that particular person, that particular need, that particular ministry. You do it And you will produce a harvest. He will always bring a hundredfold return and more. He's the best ground. He's the kind of ground we're trying to become. So he tells us to be like. He's holy, so he tells us to be holy. I am holy. We're talking about the I am's. You find out everything that he is. And that's everything he's trying to get you to become. He's got characteristics you and I never will become because he's God and we're not capital G God. But we're in his image and likeness. Can we look at a few, Father help me, characteristics of our God? Someone just want to bask in God today. Amen. Well, is there one eight, amen over here in this corner over here? Amen. The God that we love, the God that we serve, what is he like? Everything that exists by him was all things made. So then he is the first cause of all of creation. He is the one who has brought everything into physical manifestation. I'm going to go somewhere with y'all. 
We don't believe in evolution. We believe in creation. And all of creation witness to the fact that there is a God. If you're open to the truth. He's the first cause. He created limitless space. You know there's no end to the universe. There's no end to the sky. There's no end. Someone say limitless. Limitless. Someone said even the heavens that we know are expanding and enlarging. We know so little. We see so little. But our God fills the universe. It's the galaxies. In order to create limited space, he has to be infinite in nature. You can't make something greater than yourself. God can't make something greater than himself. So if he can make limited, limitless space, he's greater than that. He's more infinite. He's larger than that. Unending time. He doesn't dwell in time. He dwells in eternity. Ancient of days. The God we serve has always been and shall always be. I am. He has always been. Oh, the oldest person in here is not even 150, 120. Had anybody 110? Little itsy bitsy time on this planet in the face of all of eternity. And yet he said, I came to give you everlasting life. Yes. He cannot give you something <laughs> greater than me. He dwells outside of time, and yet he invaded time, and in the fullness of time. How many know we're coming upon another Kairos time? That's another story. Perpetual motion. Our Father set some things in motion from the very beginning of creation. When the earth began to spin on this axis, it's been spinning ever since. No batteries, <laughs> no electrical outlet, doesn't need to be recharged. <laughs> Hello, somebody. There is a power of his word and his work that keeps what he starts, keeps it going for as long as he wants it to come. Because he's out. He's not Alpha or Omega. He's Alpha and. What does that mean? That's one name. He's the Alpha and Omega. In the Greek alphabet, the first letter, the last letter. I'm the beginning and. So what he taught me was, when I start something, I finish it. I don't start something and it does. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so in Genesis chapter 1, he started a work to make a man in his image and his likeness. That man got marred by sin, fell away from the image of God, but he's out. I'm a finish! What I started! And the first. I will not be outdone by the devil. If the devil could destroy a work of God that God could not recover from, that would make the devil greater than God. The devil can do something God can't undo in God's own purpose and plan. Not so. 
But he made a perfect man and then he placed us in him. So that we could be perfected too. And so he says, I will perfect that which concerns you. Stop trying. Don't waste your time or your effort. Just love me. And let me work. Just live this life that I've given you in obedience to my command. And if you love me, my commandments are grievous. They're not hard. This Christian life is only hard if you want to do the things your flesh wants to do. This Christian life is hard if you're trying to have your way and his at the same time. And not go work! Am I making anybody mad? I hope not. <laughs> Our God is omnipotent. He has the power to set things in motion and keep things going until he's yes. done with it. And look at his creation. Oh my God. Anybody do any gardening? Do things with seeds? Aren't you close to God when you're working in his soil? When you see all the different things that comes up out of that itsy bitsy tiny little looks like nothing? Yeah. And it's scent, and it's color, and it's beauty. It's, we can't do that. When has man ever made a seed that has life that can bring any man? A number no man can number. There's so many different forms of life on this one planet. We can spend a big portion of eternity just trying to understand not just the plan, and understand you. <laughs> how does your brain work, your neural system, your kidneys, your liver, your, how does your body keep the right temperature, and how does, how does the breath keep going when you're not putting in any effort to do that? You don't even understand you and how you work in the natural. Somebody get up here and tell me how you are you in the, in, just in your physical realm. David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. How complex. I mean, you got all these different systems, from your skeletal system to your neural system to your digestive, and they, they're all working together and keeping you alive. And you didn't do it. You couldn't if you tried. So complex. You have so many neurons and synapses. You have so much going on in that control center, you are totally unaware. Yeah. Things that he put in your subconscious yeah. so that you don't have to worry about surviving. You can really live an abundant life that he came to get. I came to give you life and to give it to you. If you have to spend all your time just trying to breathe, don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to inhale. Don't forget to exhale. If you had to spend your time keeping yourself alive like that, you would never really enjoy your life. He put you on automatic. He set you in motion. <laughs> so you can attend to other things. Whew. Anything that infinitely complex details. I mean, itsy bitsy things you have to put under the mic microphone, and then these big, magnificent things that you can see afar off because they're so huge. And God is in it all. In Him, yes. we live, yes. move, yes. have our being. Yes. By Him, all things was made. Yes. Even little atoms, without Him, not anything was made. The elephants, the monkeys, the birds, the grass, the grapes. Everything without him was not anything made that was made. And when he made it, y'all, it's good. He made you, y'all, you're good. God likes what he made. And he still likes what he made. So much so that he came to redeem what he made. Not, I'm not going to destroy it, I'm going to redeem it. 
Anything that can make all of this is extremely intelligent. Anybody that smart in the room? <laughs> I have one smart boy back there. He raised his hand. <laughs> we have a consciousness. We are aware. That's why we can say I am because you know you exist. He's giving you the ability to know that you live. And anything that can give you a consciousness that's personal, he's a personal God. Let me go through this a little more quickly. He gave us feelings because he himself has emotions. Unspeakable joy, such love. He that sits in the heavens laughs. God ever make you laugh? It does good like a medicine. You can stop going to the doctor if you laugh more. Thank you for laughing, you just got healed. <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's also the truth. Yes. And I've experienced that. Where God had to heal me through laughter. At a time when I didn't think I could laugh. And it was a supernatural gift that God gave in that moment and it broke off the yokes that the enemy was trying to destroy me with. He has emotions. And that's why you have emotions. You're in his image. He made you to be like him. He gave you a will. He gave you the ability to have free choice. You can make your own decisions. If you decide you want eggs and bacon, I want pancakes. You make your own choice, right? You decide what you wanted to wear today. What shoes you're going to have. He gave you a free will. You make choices. So he has volition. He has the ability. You're not a puppet on a string. If God isn't trying to control you like that, why are you going to let somebody else try to control you like that? God has ethical bios. There is a morality to God. We know, we're supposed to know, good from evil. Even sinners have a sense. That's right, oh, that ain't right, that's wrong. Oh, that's wrong, it's two less shoes. <laughs> but their sense of good and evil is perfect today. When man ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it did not give him the spirit of discernment to discern good from evil. All right. All right. Wake up, somebody fell asleep on me on that one. We gained the knowledge that there's both good and evil, but we did not gain the discernment of good from evil. So today we have people calling evil good and good evil because they no longer can discern between what's really good and what's really evil. That's why we say, oh, it sounds good, that sounds good. That means it sounds good, that ain't good. It's because it sounds good. Doesn't mean it's God. Retune your discernment. Don't get caught up in things that people think is good. If it's not God for you, let it go. Right, right. Now this is not a bad word, although sometimes in our Christian circles it can get to be a bad word, religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. I gotta sing to wake somebody up. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good. It was good for my papa. Yes. It was good for my brothers. It's good enough for me. But there is a true religion. Yes. Come on. There is a pure religion. Yes. And whoever can create that is because there's a spiritual nature. Our God is a spirit. So real religion comes out of the spiritual realm. Amen. God created beautiful. Everything is beautiful in its time. We've got
got these wonderful men of God cooking these great meals downstairs and tempting me to stay here all night long till the evening time and partake of that good meal. <laughs> it's gonna be a thing of beauty. But if I say, brother, listen, just leave it on that plate and leave it on that table, I'll be back next month. I'll eat it then. It's beautiful in its time. <laughs> Sometimes things are happening outside of time. It ain't so beautiful. The time has passed. I'm, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not eating that now. The time has passed. God makes things beautiful because he himself is aesthetic. God loves beauty. God loves music. God loves artistry. those things and he puts that in us yes. some of you have those different creative I don't care if it's from cooking to crafting creating constructing building conceiving media centers yes. the cores yes. every level God is beautiful yes. and we appreciate beauty but we don't worship Satan was, not Satan, but Lucifer. Man, gorgeous. So gorgeous it went to his head. <laughs> Don't get so cute. <clears throat> Don't get so cute that it goes to your head. Because everything is beautiful and it's time. Should have seen me back in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But with the passing of time, when things start sagging and bagging and lagging and dragging and missing, <laughs> we still carry the beauty of God in our spirit. And we still try to do everything we can on the outside to make it look like it ain't bagging and sagging and like. <laughs> but God's not looking on your outside. Now when you get to heaven, you get your new body, you're gonna be gorgeous. You'll never be sick. And no one in heaven is old. You'll be eternally youthful. So no matter what you're going through right now, with your gray hairs, your bald head, your big belly, your knocking knees, <laughs> your toothless smile, <laughs> it's temporary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a God of justice. He's a just God. He's a God of righteousness. He's a holy God. He's a God of love. He's a loving God. And he gave us life because he's a living God. Come on, hallelujah. He's not an idol made with man's hands that we set up and fall down before. Yes, yes. He's a living God. Yes. This is page one of my notes. <laughs> it's just part of an introduction. And I'm going to whet your appetite and I'm going to walk away. Finish this sentence for me from the scripture, King James Version. In the beginning, God All right, that's good. In the beginning, was the word. The word was the word. Right. The Old Testament, Genesis, opens up with telling us about in the beginning, God. St. John chapter 1 opens up saying, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same, the same 
the same was in the beginning with God. By Him was all things made. So we have to stop. In the beginning, God created. So, St. John chapter 1 is going to give us some insights as to how God did His creating in Genesis 1. And we're going to understand that everything that he did in Genesis 1, he did it through Christ. The word, the same, the word that was with him in the beginning, the same word that became flesh. The same word that now lives inside of you, Christian. Is the same that created this planet you live on. The first recorded words of God in English, so that we can understand, because that's what we speak. Let there be light. Those are words, aren't they? God speaking. I'm speaking. Can you see the words? You can hear the words. But you can't see why, because words are spirit. They're part of the invisible spirit realm. So God started speaking, and where was he? When he started speaking, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Oh, God, this infinite, limitless, beautiful, just, holy, righteous God created. So the heaven, before he created it, it didn't exist. Heaven is a created thing. Yes. It had a beginning. It begun on day two of creation. I'm not going to go, I don't have time to go into the details now. But what I wanted to get to, if I had time, I would take you all through Genesis 1 and show you how God created everything he did through these waters. Now, look at Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Anybody got their King James? Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Genesis 1.2. 1, and I'm going to whet your appetite and I'm going to walk away. Don't be mad at me. I like for people to be hungry and I want them wanting more. Genesis. Chapter 1. My mind doesn't want to go to it. I have my Bible on here, but it's not trying to respond. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the what? Spirit of God did what? Ooh. Thank you. When God began to create, first thing he does is he comes and confronts a darkness that's on the face of the deep. We're talking about waters. And not just any kind of waters. Now I go back to the concordance. Look up all the original words before they translate them into English. And I'm going to make this very brief. But it wasn't like I had always imagined it to be. When God said, let there be light, what he said is that his spirit was over the face of the deep. It means that he was face to face with his darkness. God is light. And when he's looking at this darkness, this darkness, this deep, means it was like an abyss. It was surging and it was swirling. And if it had the power to suck you in, it could. But when it says God was on the face, it means God wasn't troubled or disturbed by that chaos. It was chaotic. God kept his cool. And when he was ready, he's looking at it, he says, let there be light. There where? 
He put the light in the darkness. That's what he does with you and me. We were sinners. We were in the darkness. But he had to come to the darkness to rescue us. He translated us out of the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his two sons. That's the first work in the natural when he created and in the now, in the spirit, when he recreates us. And, I won't go there, but everything God does, he begins by doing a work upon the waters, translating those waters from dark waters, because once, by him was all things made, without him was not anything made. When he put word, he put light. The light was the life of men. When he put his light, he said, let there be light. Not only did light, but life went into those dead, murky, dark, miserable, depressed waters full of death. And those, those waters became living waters. And once they became living waters, he then begins, every process of creation involves water. Yes. Because every process of creation that has to have life, there is no life where there is no water. Because God <coughs> is supposed to be in your waters. Come on. I'm not going to have time to teach it today, but let me just say this and I'll conclude. God knows his works from the very beginning. Okay? God knew day one that on day six he was going to make man. God's not dumb. God pre-plans. God prepares. God knows what he's going to do. Somebody say amen. amen. He knew you were coming. So what was he doing day one, two, three, four, and five? This is what the Holy Spirit, I love, I love how God talks. He said, I was preparing for the coming of man. God set everything up on this planet so that it would provide your life and your purpose before you ever got here. He didn't make you day one and say, stand by my side, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do for you. No. I'm like, what? He said, my bride is on the earth, supposed to be preparing for my return, right? He said, what is Jesus doing in heaven right now? What did Jesus say? I go to prepare a place. Heaven is busy on your behalf right now. There's things going on. Oh my God. There are things happening on your behalf in heaven right now. You have no idea because he's not going to wait till you get there. When you get there, he says, oh now let me show you the house I made for you. Let me show you how they, because I know your style, your plan, your take. I know you want to be by the sea, and this one wants to be over there on the mountain. Just, I, I said it just in the right terrain, the right kind of, listen, the right kind of fruit and everything you like, it grows over here in this part of heaven. Because I made it for you, because I know that's what you like. Everyone's place in his kingdom is tailor made. And I don't have time. But it's tailor made for you. He's preparing. And in the meantime, while we're here as his bride, transforming into his image and likeness, we have a hope. And he said, He that has this hope purifies himself. Even as he is pure. While we're about our Father's business, Getting our lost sisters and brothers because Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Going on every side of town trying to find the rest of the family and bring them home. While we're doing that, we're preparing as the bride to stand before him without spot, blemish, wrinkle, or any such thing. Walking with him on a daily basis so that when we get into glory, it's not culture shock. <laughs> The way we lived here. Yeah. Thy kingdom come. Uh, Thy kingdom come. Why? So that the things in the earth 
got here from above. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So that when you get to heaven, oh, that looks like what I saw on planet Earth. Well, yeah, you prayed it to the earth from the king. There are things in the earth that are also in heaven. You're in heaven right now. You're seated with him. Aren't you? So when you're looking at who you are, it's not just who you're becoming, it's who you are in the spirit realm. When Lazarus died and Martha was struggling more than Mary, you have been here. They both said, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said to Martha, don't you believe on the resurrection? Wait a minute. He said, he didn't say, I am going to be the resurrection. He had not gone to the cross yet. He had not gone to the tomb yet. He had not come up out of the grave yet. But he didn't say, I'm going to be. Because when you speak from the spirit realm, who you are, Amen. it's already done. Yes. Amen. I am the resurrection. Yes. It's who you already are. So speak from the spirit realm what God says about you. Gideon, mighty man of valor. He's shaking, quaking, hiding from the Midianites. He doesn't seem like a mighty man of valor to himself. But God saw him for who he really is. And when you get into his presence and you become transformed, you're not just going to see him. You behold him as in a mirror. What reflects in a mirror? You. Amen? Amen. See yourself. Let's stand. No, didn't get to my notes. I hope I didn't go too, too long. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Get your taste. Whatever you get now, it's just the earnest of your expectation. That's right. Never think that you've gotten enough God. Enough revelation, enough word. Never get so full that you don't need to be refilled. Don't get satisfied. Always want more. Empty yourself out so that he can fill you with him. Let him set you on fire. Don't be afraid to give what you've got. If he tells you to give it, he freely gives. No good thing does he withhold. Right now, in the name of Jesus, whatever you need is not being withheld from you by God. And if it's being withheld because of your own unbelief, rebuke your own unbelief in the name of Jesus. By your own fears, your own doubts, your own low self-esteem, accusations of the enemy. She's talking to the bishop, talking to you. God doesn't love you like that. Rebuke the lies of the enemy. And thank God he's the one saying that, not God himself. Thank God he's a liar. Because if he's saying it, we know we got authority over that. I want the devil to hate me. I don't want God to hate me. Every sickness and disease that comes from the enemy, God doesn't put that on us. God can only give what he is. He's not sick. He's not diseased. He never said that to be sickness. He never said let there be doctors. He never said let there be evil. There are things that are that exist that are part of an unspoken creation. Because there's things God cannot. He cannot say. It's not in him. He doesn't want to. It's not his nature. It's not his character. When he said, let there be 
light, he did not destroy the darkness. He simply gave darkness a time. There's times in your life it's going to be dark. Your day started in the dark, the evening and the morning. The evening and the morning. But don't worry, another day is coming. People say, what's the day, 24 hours? No. No. I'm sorry. No. 24 hours is marked by the rotating of the earth, but the earth wasn't rotating, the sun wasn't in the sky day one. He didn't create the sun, moon, and stars till day four. Come on. So how long did it take? How did God mark a day? How does, oh, yeah. how does God mark a day in your life? Alpha and Omega. Every day, Pastor, he did a work that he started and finished. So when the next morning came, he didn't have to go back and redo, fix, improve, renovate anything. He did a new work. And the new work marked a new day. He finished it. Another morning comes. He does another work. It's another day. God's days are marked by him starting and finishing what he started. What day are you in? Maybe you're only two days old in the spirit world. God, I feel the anointing of God. Oh, I feel the anointing of God. this video please like comment and subscribe if you'd like to donate to this ministry go to shilohub.org remember to hit the bell for notifications and we'll see you next time